previous Avengers movie. The biggest movies of all time. Okay, so tonight's sponsor for the event, it will be Rob uh, Delaporte at Made for Ink. So obviously we're talking about journaling. So I thought we, we, we would put some notebooks as prizes. So um, they will be, uh, I'll do a random number generator for the notebooks. And then I'll also do another random generator for the Robert Oster FUK Inc. Um, and I now have the pleasure to introduce Dolly. So if, again, if you don't have a notebook and a pen, go grab one. Um, so just a little bit about Dolly. Uh, she has been journaling for over 20 years now and is the founder of Kaizen Journaling. She uses journaling as a tool for personal development, therapy, and all around well being. She lives in London and is a content designer by trade and fantasy sci fi writer on the side, though currently more obsessed with hiking than writing. Um, so I'll hand over to you. I'm really excited and I will mute myself. Thank you. Um, I'm actually going to present my screen because I have a slide deck and everything. <laughs> Oh, can I, I think uh, if the screen sharing is disabled by host, can... So I think it should be on the meetings tab on top left in Zoom. Sorry, I had myself muted um, this okay. whole time. I was doing it and it's done now. Um, yeah, you should have it. Have uh, it. Oh, yes, I do. Thank you. <laughs> cool. Uh, just do that. It might kick me off because of like allowing um, this Zoom to share, but if it does, I'll be right back. Oh, I think you can all see my screen. Perfect. I see it, and you're still here, so we're good to go. Uh, so yeah, hi everyone. Uh, I'm really happy to be here because I actually do love just talking about journaling. Um, so like Pura said, I am founder of Kaizen Journaling, and I've been kind of like journaling for myself for over 20 years, and I've been doing workshops and courses and and stuff like that. But this is definitely like my hobby project. So my website currently is horribly out of. Uh, date in terms of like the technical capacities but you can still find like free articles and uh, prompts and stuff if you need to and I also write on medium about journaling if you again want like just more free inspiration this is kind of the vague timeline I have for the session just so kind of people know what to expect because you know we're all busy we know what to do with our time um, and then so these are like some of the things that I've written in the past. I've written a book about uh, 365 days of journaling. So you get a prompt for every day, journaling to self-awareness. And then I've also, this will appeal to you, handwritten journaling in the digital age. So like why we should still use pens, not necessarily fountain pens, but pens uh, as opposed to, yeah, just like do, doing digital journaling. So I'm, I'm a very strong advocate for of journaling and its benefits. Um, these are just some of my journals. Right now I'm on journal 50, uh, 
not counting like all the other side journal projects that I've done over the years, like Commonplace Journal, and at one point, Tarot Journal, and Dream Journal, and Reading Journal, and Fitness Journal. So yeah, this is just like my normal 50th journal. And, and when I was actually preparing for this session, I also randomly found an entry from 2017, where I had written this thing about for World Mental Health Day and, and how journaling and like stuff helps with that. So I just thought, you know, that was quite appropriate for today's session. So why journals? So I'm gonna start with like these two quotes that I find inspiring and also how they relate to what I wanna talk about. So Anne Frank said, I can shake off everything as I write. My sorrows disappear, my courage is reborn. I hope that nobody here is life is as hard as Anne Frank's life, but you know, we all have our challenges. So, and especially journaling, journaling for well-being, what I find personally, and I think a lot of people find that, is that just by using that act of writing, just by taking that time and giving, your, giving yourself that space to just kind of like get everything out, stop, stop consuming information and just kind of almost like dump thoughts out of your brain. It just, I, I find it very therapeutic, but I also find that depending on what I'm trying to work through, it gives me insights that I otherwise might have taken a lot longer to get to. Um, um, then I don't, you might have heard of Tim, Tim Ferriss. He's a you know, like very famous productive guru and has written loads of big, big books, including Four Hour Work Week. So he said, I don't journal to be productive. I don't do it to find great ideas or to put down prose I can later publish. The pages aren't intended for anyone but me. It's the most cost-effective therapy I've ever found. Now, if you know anything about Tim, he's super prolific and he's like really, really dedicated to for to personal development in terms of like whatever skills he wants to gain, you know, he just kind of goes after them. Um, but what I find really interesting is also this idea of that journaling doesn't have to be productive. And, and that's also how I use it. So even though I use it for my journaling for my personal development, I don't use that as a productive activity or like I like I said, I'm a writer on the side. I don't use my journaling as creative writing either because I think it needs to be that safe personal space. It just needs to be somewhere where you can be yourself. Uh, and this is, I will come to this later, but I'll touch on it here because it's relevant. This is also why I actually don't think that you should share your journals with anyone or journal entries, unless you're just sharing specific pages that you know are, are not very personal and you're just sharing for whatever reason. Because you, I think we all need that space where you know that it's just, just for, your eye, for your eyes only. And, so that you don't even subconsciously filter yourself. And then finally, um, so Julia Cameron is a creative writing person. I mean, she writes a lot about creative writing and one of her most famous book is The Artist's Way. And that's where the concept of the morning pages comes from. So she said, writing is medicine. It is an appropriate antidote to injury. It is an appropriate companion for any difficult change. So again, writing for about journaling for well-being, but also just journaling in general in life. As you go through, like, you know, especially to, through tough times, but also just as you go through life and transition period, and especially like the last couple of years that we've all had with COVID and lockdown and you know, personal challenges that people went through. It's I think we really need that space. We need that space to stop, to write things down, but also just to kind of come to terms with what we are going through because it's not necessarily easy to find or pinpoint your own trauma or like how things might be affecting you. I know that I found last couple of years for the first time in my life where my mental health was severely impacted in a way that it had never been before. And, and like, for, as somebody who doesn't normally suffer from mental health problems, this, it's kind of like shock to your system because yes, you know, these things happen. They, they happen to people close to me in my life, but it's still always different when it's you. And for me, so that's when I actually really, really dedicated myself to do morning pages. Uh, and I, I did that with great discipline. I even got up early for like about six to eight months for the time that I felt that I needed. And then by the time I got to a stage where I was like, okay, I, I no longer need this. And then I kind of, now I do them ad hoc and I don't do them in a disciplined way. So this is a nice segue into how to journal for well-being specifically. 
And so I'm going to talk through like this different techniques and things that I find useful. Um, in the earlier when we were talking in just the chat, I know a couple of you mentioned you tried keeping journals, but you haven't managed to keep them for long. And, and that's actually the key to make it consistent. The issue here is that if you just do it now and again, yes, it's still great, but you never get into that flow because starting journaling is always very hard. It's, it's very hard to just kind of get to your own subconscious level and also just, just get used to it as a, something that you just naturally do. Now I'll admit, because I've been doing it for so long, like for me, it's a really natural part of my life. So I don't, you know, so, so I remember what it was like, but I don't actually struggle from it now just simply because I'm so used to it. So for me, it's just something that I do automatically. It's, it's any time given in the day. But when I was trying to establish habit for morning pages, so like I said, I got up early in the morning, reserved that time specifically for morning pages. But in the first few weeks, the other thing I did was that I actually laid out the notebook, the pen, everything that I wanted to use right where I was going to sit down to write because you want to eliminate friction. You want to make it as easy for you as possible. So like set everything out in the, you know, the night before, like how people say for exercise, that lay out your clothes and your shoe be shoes before you go to bed so that you just have everything ready. So then all I did was I got up in the morning, I would make coffee and then I would write my pages and then I would do everything else. So I'm not saying that you have to do morning pages. Um, you can pick whatever time that suits you if you're just trying to get into the habit, but it helps to set a time because, you know, life gets into the way we all have like a million things to do. So I would say, even if you can only do it for five minutes, or even if you can only write five sentences, try to first build a consistent habit for like, you know, at least a month or two, and then see how you feel and then see if it organically grows for you. Uh, the other way to look about look at it is like treat it as you time and schedule it so like treat it as something important treat it as something that will bring value to your life because if you again like if you think of it as a chore it's not really going to stick um i'm just going to talk about this point not in order but kind of all together so make it a ritual make it fun make it you know activity that you look forward to as something that you really want to do the way some of my friends do it is like, for example, you know, in their in their desk area or in their journaling area, they like to candle or incense or something, or they have their own little cute things or symbolic things or, or gifts that their loved one have given them that are meaningful to them. They keep them around. Um, I personally don't need any of that. And also like, I kind of don't have that kind of dedicated space. I generally just did it on my sofa. So I just leave notebook and pen, but it's like whatever works for you. So if you are that kind of tactile person who likes to have those mementos or things around, then, you know, keep them, make your desk, your, your space, light a candle, do whatever you want. Uh, but yeah, make it, make it kind of like almost like a ritual that you enjoy. For me, that was coffee. It was coffee, a nice pen and a nice notebook. And then that worked. Um, so again, pick your favorite pen and notebook. You know, you can experiment, you can try different inks, color ink colors every day if you like, but, but whatever you do, like go for the quality, go for the tactile experience that you would actually enjoy because you don't wanna sit there writing on like, you know, low quality pages while you're trying to think about, oh no, I don't know what to write, I'm stuck. So it just, just make it as pleasant as possible when you start. Um, I really don't need to sell it to this group, but I'll say it anyway. I really do advocate writing by hand when people are journaling, uh, unless obviously you have a medical condition. And that's actually because when you write by hand, first of all, you have that actual physical connection, but also most of us these days are really fast typers. So writing by hand slows you down. It gives you, it gives your brain that time to make the connection between your brain and your hand and the words that come out. So I also feel that even if you write as fast as you possibly can, you still have more time and more moment to kind of unearth that subconscious thought, which is where you eventually want to get to. Uh, and the other thing is that also, depending on your moods and depending on your emotions, your handwriting will change. So if you ever look back on it, there is also, it also tells you like what you were going through or, or what happened or, you know, why was your writing, a certain way because maybe you were too excited or too sad or too upset or just you know normal and and so that also shows you like another level in your journaling um as i've said like journaling for me is very therapeutic but a caveat that you know it's not a replacement for proper medical 
therapy if you're suffering from depression, PTSD, or any other diagnosable condition. But on it, but even if you are going to a therapist, I think journaling is still a great tool to use as like a side support system. Um, so I feel like anybody and everybody can use it and you can benefit from it as a therapeutic resource. This is a key thing. Don't be afraid to experiment. And then also don't be afraid to dump what doesn't work for you. So if you try doing morning pages for a month or so and you find that you really just are not a morning person or you just don't have that time because you know you have to take kids to school or whatever, find another time. Or if you find that any particular system of journaling or any technique of journaling doesn't work for you, you don't have to stick to it. Try something else. Try it, mix and match, come up with your own approach. Um, it's useful to use tools and techniques and prompts when you start only because it gives you something definitive to do. So like if you don't know what to write, a prompt can tell you what you should write about. If you don't know how to journal, a technique can tell you how you should do it or how long you should write for. But that those are, you know, those are like support wheels on a bicycle. You don't need them forever. And then journaling for well-being doesn't mean only writing about mental health because your well-being also includes your hobbies, your interests, your relationships, your work, your whole life basically. So when you are journaling for well-being, you're basically trying to support yourself uh, in, a, you know, in a way that you can be as happy as possible or as content as possible, um, or just kind of like be who you are and, and you know, enjoy your life. We're all gonna have ups and downs, we know that. It's not, it's not a consistent journey. So journaling for well-being can support you and put the ups and downs. So, you know, you should write about good things as well as bad things so that it shows you that whole cohesive picture of your life. So there are only two rules of journaling. And one is keep your journal private and your journal your way. So again, I would say keep your journal private because it really does impact on filtering things out. If you live in an environment or if you live with people where you can't necessarily trust that your journal will be private, then you know maybe find a place or journal in a place that they don't know about or find a place where you can just keep it safe. Um, but obviously, if you live in a place where you can't trust people with your journal, then you know you also need to look at that bigger issue of who you live with. Uh, but yeah, but I would say keep your journal private. Don't share them with anyone. Even if you learn something in your journal that you do want to talk to somebody about, just talk to them. You don't need to show them what you wrote. Just you know, just bring up the issues, but not necessarily the journal. Keep it as your safe space because it will be really important, especially if you're going through something tough, then it will be important for you to have that safe space. And your journal your way, like seriously, there are no rules. Uh, you will find a million and one ways to keep a journal, to keep a well-being journal. And, and you know, somebody will say, do it this way. Other people will say, do it this way. You just have to try many things and just stick to whatever works for you. Like when I started off, I started off, uh, I was a teenager when I started off. So I started off in a Dear Diary format. And most of my entries at the time were, you know, about how tough my life was, including the usual stuff of I hate my parents, I hate my sister, school, whatever. So it was the classic, you know, the very dramatic teenage life that most of us led. Uh, but over time it evolved, over time I tried different things, over time, you know, I experimented. And now it's it's not a dear diary thing, but now it's kind of like a mix of a diary as well as a reflective tool. So I don't record everything that I do in a day. I don't, you know, I don't, I don't say I did this today, I did this today, I ate this today, but there might be days when I do it because for whatever reason, I want to remember that or that was important to me. Uh, I also write now at, any and all times of day. So like I will just journal kind of whenever I want and whenever I'm able to. Um, sometimes it's in the morning, sometimes it's during the day, sometimes in the evening, sometimes it's multiple times a day. So it really just does depend on what's going on in my life at the time and you know, and what I feel like. But I usually always have a journal with me um, so that if I did really want to write something, I would just do that. So these are some of the techniques and ideas that you can use. Um, I would, especially those of you who are struggling to set up a journaling habit, I would strongly, strongly encourage you to try free writing, which is basically stream of consciousness writing. So you set a timer and you start writing and you write as fast as possible. If you don't know what to write or if you get stuck, then you keep repeating your last sentence. 
I know it sounds stupid and sounds boring, but it really does work because if you keep repeating your last sentence, your mind will eventually give up and just give you new ideas. Um, the reason I say seven minutes is the sweet spot for newbies, it's because a lot of people find that 10 minutes, 15 minutes is too much, like especially when you're starting out and you're reluctant. Five minutes is a bit too less because your brain kind of hasn't gotten going. If you write for seven minutes, there is a very high probability that you will actually just keep writing. So I would say that if you're not sure, try for set a, set a timer for seven minutes and keep trying. I did this experiment in like my live workshops. Um, and yeah, every time, almost everyone wanted to keep writing. So if you find that you want to keep writing, just keep going, but like at least force yourself to write for seven minutes because free writing really, really works. And it just gets you, it just gives you, you know, all sorts of ideas and what's going on in your brain. And it's, it can be really insightful. I mean, sometimes it's just really mundane and boring. Uh, but, you know, that's life. That's our brains. A lot of the time we just think about mundane and boring. So that's that's not necessarily something to worry about. Morning pages. So, again, if you're not familiar with morning pages, this is the technique that Julia Cameron describes in her book, The Artist's Way. The idea here is to write three pages. And actually, she means three A4 pages. Um, First thing in the morning, before you do anything else where information goes into your brain, so, you know, no phones, nothing, um, you should try and do it as soon as you can after getting up, basically. And the idea for that is because you want to clear out whatever baggage you are carrying in your brain when you wake up, but also you want to kind of capture whatever ideas or whatever thoughts or dreams have been percolating in your brain overnight. So it, that way you just start your day really, really refreshed and with clarity. Uh, I did find that, but because I used it, especially when I was going through a hard time, I found that it really helped me. Um, so not in the first couple of weeks, it was actually really annoying to just do that. And also I did proper A4 pages and my handwriting is tiny. So it took me 45 minutes every single morning. Now you don't have to do that. Some people do A5 pages. Some people just write really big, whatever, you know, whatever works for you. Uh, but I just religiously wanted to do it. So I, I wrote in my regular handwriting and I did three pages. And, and as, as weeks went by, I really began to see, you know, how some of the things that I didn't remember were coming back up, some of the insights that I was capturing over the weeks. But more importantly, like after those 45 minutes, most of the time, not every time, but most of the time, I would just feel like my mind was empty, that, you know, there was like a load had lifted and then I would start my day without that baggage in my head. So I did that for like about six to eight months and I, I found it really, really useful. So right now, like I said, I don't do it every day because I feel that I don't need it. But if I ever wake up with a day where I'm just like, there's just too much going on, then immediately I would go and do morning pages. Um, then practice gratitude. I know every every person like who talks about journaling or um, life coaching or anything, they would say that. But this really works because it gives us perspective. Uh, most of us, just by the fact that we are living where we are, we are here on this Zoom call, have a certain degree of privilege that a lots of people in the world don't. Uh, so it's important to remember that uh, because you know it's easy to think about what we don't have. Like just earlier, I was complaining about not having a big enough house to you know put all my stationery. Uh, but so it's important to remember what we do have. The technique I found for this is actually right now. I do it. So I'm also using bullet journal, uh, but I use bullet journal more as a to do list. And then I use my regular journal for journaling. So for my bullet journal at the end, I just have a field where I say three things I'm grateful for. So every day I try and do that. And sometimes it's just, you know, something as simple as I'm grateful for something like I'm, gr I'm grateful for this TV show that I watched or I'm grateful for this food that I ate. Sometimes it's a bit more profound than that. It doesn't really matter. It just makes you stop and think about it, even if you just end up recording either the same thing or, you know, quite ordinary things. Um, using prompts and exercises. So again, this is really a good way to just get into journaling. You can just Google for free journaling prompts and exercises, and there are millions of things. Um, or you can be more specific in your search. So if you wanted to journal about a specific topic, whether it's well-being or anything else, uh, you can search for that. And you can find lots of free prompts and exercises just to kind of get you going. There are also lots of books that you can buy. Uh, but yeah, but I think to get started, there is lots of free information available just to kind of get you going. 
The other thing that you can do, which I've done sometimes, uh, and I know lots of people who do that, is use themes. So fountain pens, for example, you can write about fountain pens and you know why you collect them, why are you obsessed with them? What's going on? What's your way of reflecting uh, with fountain pens? But also like people who keep reading journals, they write about seasons. I know people, you know, like, you know, there are some people who take photos of like one view, a sunset or a tree every single day at different times of the day. You can do the same with your journal. So whether it's a particular topic you want to write about a particular season or, you know, whatever, or event, you can do that. Like there, there are five year journals you can buy where basically you just have a tiny little entry for every single day for five years. And so, you know, this the idea behind this sort of things, like one sentence journal, five sentence journal, it's to limit you because sometimes having those constraints actually frees us. It gives us a chance to be more creative. It just takes away the burden of, oh my God, I don't know what to write and I don't know how to fill these three pages. So having the constraint just gives you that freedom. Bullet journal. Uh, again, if you're not familiar with it, just look up bullet journal. I will. I would highly advise just looking at the official bullet journal website just to understand the basic techniques and stuff of um, how it was designed and why it was designed. And then you can branch out into however much elaborate bullet journaling you might want to do. Mine is pretty simple. Mine is more just like about fountain pens and pages. It's uh, I don't really do art journaling. And, and like I said, I mostly use it more as a as a to-do list, but also as somewhere to like map goals and uh, tasks and stuff. So more for practical purposes uh, rather than more reflective journaling. Uh, you can also use this to as a habit tracker or to track specific things like, you know, whether you're trying to track your mood or your relationships or fitness, medical conditions, anything really. Or if, even if you're just trying to see whether you feel more energetic certain times of the day than others, those are like also good things to know about yourself and record them in your well-being journal. Because obviously when you're more energetic or when do you feel good, it has an impact on how you perform and how you spend your day. So over a period of time, these things would give you a lot of insight. Uh, and then again, like I said, mix and match, experiment, you know, don't, don't be, don't ever be afraid to experiment in your journals. So these are just some examples of my various bits of journals uh, from random times. So yeah, this is when like I was planning to do, I, I got inspired by um, Bill Gates blog post on doing a think week where you actually spend some time thinking rather than just always consuming information. So I experimented with that. Um, the bottom is actually my commonplace book, which I just used to collect lots of information or just random bits of uh, inspiration and stuff. This is my hiking journal. Uh, and then this is a random quote I found from my 2016 journal. So I also use it as like a motivational thing, as a positive thing where, you know, I can, if I find something that inspires me, I like to record it somewhere so that I will come across it again. And, you know, hopefully I'll come across it at the right time where it just gives me that boost or energy or motivation just when I need it. And, and most of the time it works. And so now we can spend 15 minutes doing some journaling together. So if you want to grab your notebooks and your pen, I have this um, journaling prompts here for you. So you have like about just over two minutes for each of the questions. Not all of them will take the same amount of time. So, you know, just, yeah, just, just give it a go, see how you feel and, and let's do some writing together. And then we can come back for the end. But, but if anybody has any questions about this, like, please just uh, speak. But otherwise, yeah, we'll just write for 15 minutes. Thank you. 
Okay, how are you all doing? I hope. Yeah, I mean, you can continue after. I'll just put this back so you don't see double faces. Um, yeah, so that was kind of it for this session. But like, if you have any questions, thought, feelings about this, then, you know, please, uh, please feel free to ask. And I believe this will be available to you to look at later. So if you wanted to uh, do these questions or prompts again, you can do them. So I just wanted to say thank you. Um, like, I think it's really in interesting just kind of because you were talking about writing, I kind of found the writing easier um, because you uh, normally I'm just my, like I said earlier, I, I struggle with the motivation of writing. So I've done this, I've, I've kind of, I've tried morning pages, I've tried, and, and they do work because, but I really need to be in the right mindset for it. I have set up my space. So I, I that tip I've tried and it still kind of didn't motivate me enough. I tried getting my coffee ready. I tried even my husband to make me coffee and like, you know, just kind of kind of get me to start writing, but I still haven't figured out what clicks for me to write. Um, I know writing helps because after it, I do feel better. Yeah. But I just still cannot get myself to be motivated enough to do it. Um, so I don't know if you have any other tips other than the ones you've already shared, which I have written down. So I'm going to try. And uh, one of the things I did take a takeaway was that um, when I do feel stuck with repeating the last sentence, I never thought about that. So that's something I'll try. Um, but... Yeah, I mean, the other thing I would say, like, if you um start with the free writing because it takes like you know it takes away the constraint but it also gives you so because the only rule you have to follow there is that you have to keep writing so even mm. if it's repeating and and it, it does help people who are generally reluctant for whatever reason mm. uh, and the other thing i would say is um if you have you only ever tried it in mornings or you tried other times i have tried it at night time but i think i'm just tired by the end of the day um i have a toddler who takes up a lot of my time so by the time the end of the day comes after work because then I'm maybe too exhausted. You can, otherwise like the other thing to try would be literally that like one pick pick a number between one to five sentences but that you mm. write every single day because it's for initially it's more about establishing a habit True. um so even if you just write one sentence every day even if it's just like this is the thing i'm grateful for it still puts you in it it creates that passion of behavior yeah. which then you can expand on I think I just need to make it a habit again. It was a habit for me. It was a casual habit as well. I just kind of ended up doing it because I enjoyed it. But it's just in the past kind of six, seven months, I've just struggled. Yeah. Um, but thank you very much. No worries. Yeah. I mean, maybe you could keep, you know, one pen aside that you can mm -hmm. only use if you journal. So that could ah, be your intention. <laughs> yeah, I could actually. That's a good idea. No, I'm, I'm open to ideas. It's, it's something I really do want to do because it's, it was something I did enjoy, you know, it's something I like about pens, inks, papers, everything. I just love the way the ink writes on paper. So it is a pleasurable experience for me, but I just can't get into it. So. But I'll work on it. Um, yeah. There was another question in the chat from Lucy. So she says, she's just wondering if you think there's value in discarding what you've written or do you keep it all? Did you keep all your morning pages? So there are two schools of thoughts here and you can, yes, I, I keep all of my journals and all of my morning page, like I keep all of it uh, because even if I have no intention of sharing it with anyone, I find it useful to go back to these things because sometimes I do get insights that, you know, would be helpful to me, whether sometimes I just get ideas for like things, projects or whatever that I might want to work on. But other times I get insights on just whatever life problem that I'm trying to work through. So if I, get that especially in morning pages and what I used to do is just like highlight it or something so I can go back to it if I need to mm -hmm. um the other thing I found really useful with my journals it's um looking back at now like 20 years of journals one I find it interesting because obviously I have grown and changed as a person so it's sometimes really weird to see what I thought like when I was 17 uh and and so it's you know both funny and weird and sometimes interesting so yeah so I really like them the I know some people do burn their pages because they find it either either cathartic or because they're worried that other people would see them I also know some people who worry what's going to happen to their journals when they die 
so again, you have to think about this things. I don't worry about it because I'm like, if I'm dead, I'm dead. And if people want to read it, it's their problem. If they're upset, what are they going to do about it? I'm dead, right? So, you know, <laughs> so like, this is my way of looking at it. Um, yeah, so you can burn them. It just depends on if you're going to get any value out of it, if you keep them. But this is why I also think that you should write both positives and negatives, like basically a whole view of your life so that when you do look back at them, it's not just the negativity that's coming back at you. Um, another couple of just messages in the chat I've is that journals since I was a teenager. Sorry, I've journals since I was a teenager, and I um I read mine back regularly, and it's really helpful. You can learn yeah. a lot more about yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and on that, Sorry, like one of the things I find really yeah. No, no, it's it's a relevant point that one of the things I find is especially when I notice that I'm repeating patterns of behavior that are not good for me. So, you know, if you find something doesn't work and you're like, you look at your journals, you're like, I was complaining about the same thing five years ago. Why haven't I done something about it? So it's that as well. It just makes it, because it's in black and white, it makes it obvious to you that, you know, it's it's not just the now problem. This is something that you've just kind of been moaning about for years and not done anything. So I find that also very helpful in just kind of, yeah, self-awareness. <laughs> Don't apologize, Rachel. I was just reading, uh, reading the messages in case anyone's not. Um, so Sue mentioned that she nearly ran out of ink, but she found it very interesting. Uh, I, she said she had probably four insights that she didn't realize, that I needed to realize, sorry. Um, and Andrew mentioned that she finds it useful to carry a notebook around to write passing ideas um, when you're just kind of floating in and out. Um, yeah, so if you guys have any more questions, please ask. I might take the quiet minute to announce our winner for tonight. So um, I did a random jumper generator again, like I said, for the ink, uh, sorry, for the ink and the notebooks. So for the notebooks, um, our winner is Helen Ashby Ridgway. Uh, so congratulations, um, we'll be in touch with the notebooks. And for the ink, it's Beverly. Um, so enjoy. Thank you very much. <laughs> Yeah, and like if you guys think of you know any journaling related questions or things you want to ask like feel free to reach out to me in the fountain pen group that's yeah i, I talk about this a lot <laughs> uh, as you can tell by my speedy narrative <laughs> no thank you very much it was very interesting hi can i can i say something mm -hmm. wow um, Dolly, thank you so much. I really found it really interesting. I've journaled for years, but sometimes I get those dry patches or times that I don't. And I have to thank Apurva um, for her monthly prompts on the fountain. <laughs> I only joined the fountain pen group last year. Mm -hmm. and um, I've loved doing the monthly and they really helped me to write again. So I've loved that. Um, there was loads of things you said, Dol Dolly. I took loads of notes. And um, I love that repeating the sentence again. I would have never thought I've read the artist's um, way yeah. and I used to do that for a while, but I stopped and mm -hmm. repeating the sentence. Um, I never heard that before. I don't remember reading it before. So I think I will I have to try that one because I think that would be a good on blocker. Yeah. But oh yeah I, that's not from that book that's just something that I found I, I started doing randomly and I found that it worked for me fantastic <laughs> thank you so much it's a great talk another thing that I found is what you talked about around themes um so when I got into fountain pens not about the fountain pen challenge necessarily but I liked picking an ink and writing with the color of ink and seeing how that ink uh works so because I started with, you know, everyone generally starts with a blue or a black, and then they realize, oh my goodness, there are about 50,000 other colors. So then I started getting into uh, greens and oranges and yellows and stuff, and I kind of started writing about the ink and then how the ink behaves in the paper. So, but that's a very yeah. fountain pen nerdy thing, but yeah. Yeah, but it doesn't matter, right? You know, that's, uh, yeah. Um, a question, what's everybody's favorite notebooks and favorite rulings? So maybe you can start us off, Dolly. Ah, so my, in terms of journal, I actually use all different types, like um, right now, I, my journal is this, 
but for bullet journal, I like the Lyoktrum ones because yeah, I used to use Moleskins, but as we all know, they don't work with fountain pens anymore. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so right now I use Lyoktrum uh, as my bullet journal, but I'm usually open to experimenting with notebooks. I just want, mm -hmm. ideally I prefer like plain pages. Uh, my, my favorite pen right now is the Pilot Custom 823 which is just like so amazing. Uh, yeah, so that's that's my favorite pen right now. <laughs> Jackie, you had a question? Or you had your hand up? Yeah, no, I have, and I'm trying to work out how to put it down, unless somebody else can put it down for me. Um, uh, I have a um, quite mentally ill um, stepdaughter who's in her 20s. Um, and uh, how, are there any tips that you could give to get that? Because I think it's something she really, really would benefit from. But one of the issues is just getting them started. Find, yeah. You know, just picking up a pen and like you say, just writing one one sentence. We've been keeping a kind of um, progress diary, trying to do get to the end of the day and say, OK, what are the successes? And although we've been talking about the successes, I've been the person writing them down. <laughs> So how, any tips, hints, anybody, how how might we be able to spark that? I mean, she's quite artistic and creative. Um, so it's not like she she wouldn't do something along those lines, but. So I yeah. think, I think if as long as she's willing, something like free writing would help, uh, but also to make it clear that she can keep it personal to herself or show it only to her therapist or, you know, GP or whatever, but not to you or anybody else because it's important to have that space, but as long, you know, um, and, and the reason I say free writing is because it's it's fine to measure successes and stuff, but, and I don't know, because obviously every mental health is issue is different, but generally it's there because there are, you know, emotional blockages or things that they cannot express or yeah, they don't know how to process. And so having that space where they can also write about just that confusion or, you know, just the negativity or whatever, the, the clouding their brain, it, it's just that safe space. So, you know, if she can start with seven minutes, 10 minutes and just keep writing and, and tell her about the repeating the last sentence to kind of give herself that emotional outlet, I think that might be a good place to start. Uh, but then again, you know, iterate that it's a private space. Um, yeah. <coughs> yeah. Okay. okay. Excuse me. Yeah. Uh, may, may, I, may I say something about this? Hello, I'm from Norway, so my English isn't well that, that good, but I, I'll try. Uh, but because I'm, I've, I've, I've learned as a teacher that for, to get pupils to write, it's okay to let them write just single words. Just start writing. If you can't, if they don't know what to write, they can just keep writing the same word until they come to the next word. And just let them write and don't let them well, as you said, they don't have to show it to anyone. Just keep them, keep it to themselves. Thank you. Thanks. Jackie, Thank you. I... That's, that's, that's brilliant. Thank you. Jackie, may I make a suggestion as well? If she's artistic, could she possibly draw something in her journals and then write a few words about it to translate one form of expressing how she's feeling into another? I, I can certainly try with that. Um, that yeah, she is very artistic. There's a bit of a problem going on um, in that uh, she's very tied up in her art um, for a whole bunch of reasons. And oh. then if the artwork isn't good, she feels that that's a reflection on herself. Nobody else, but she be beats herself up about it. Right. So okay. whilst she can be good at it, if she then does something and it doesn't turn out how she wants it, uh, yeah, it's worth a try. Thank you. I'll, I'll definitely use it. I'm, I'm Just not gonna... translating one medium into another yeah. might actually allow her to express herself in a different way. Yes, the... thank you. Is she, is she like in any physical activity? <laughs> I wish. <laughs> Because um, that, yeah, yeah, that it, helps. Uh, and it, also, it, it's a it's, struggle. It's a struggle to get her to to go um, and take part in something physical. We've we've had uh, reasonable success. Um, we have two dogs, and they need walking. So there's kind of a need to and and to get her to come along. And she knows that she should do it, uh, but it's this fine balance between obviously not wanting to push her a little bit, but not push her too hard. 
um so yeah it's it's uh yeah, yeah. So you were going to tie that in with something what, what yeah yeah that? actually with journaling because so one of the things that you could do so even if they uh she's just taking or coming to take dogs for the walk how you can tie with journaling is you know ask her to notice three things on the walk and write them down so it allows her to pay attention to her surroundings which means that she's at least for that moment not absorbed in her own brain uh, and it, you know, it, it gets her to pay more attention to what's going on. And maybe she notices something nice, you know, especially if you are able to walk around in a park or somewhere yeah, a bit more pleasant. Um, then those are, so, you know, just three things. It doesn't have, to, it can be word fragments, doesn't have to be like a proper sentence. Um, yeah. Thank you. One, yeah, I'm frantically I've, writing notes. If I'm looking yeah. down, it's because well, I'm writing thing notes. Which we, I was going to say, because I, I work in an art department in a school. Um, but I also work in an SDN department with students which have uh, mental um, health challenges um, as well as physical uh, challenges as well. And one thing which I have found is really good is um, scrapbooking. Um, so like a scrapbooking approach to journaling. So rather than actually committing the actual artwork to the pages, have a quite a nice um, thick um, either wire bound book or a, a folder in which you can actually store the works which is most um, cherishes and she could put that into there but photography and uh writing can go really hand in hand and she could maybe when she's out on her walks take some nice pictures and then because the photograph is quite easy to delete these days she can then you know keep the ones which she uh, likes the most and then write down things which she enjoyed about um, taking those pictures things which she observed and things like that that would be quite a good useful exercise and we've done that with um, students in work uh, with uh, quite good success uh, just because you know taking a photograph it's it's an easier access into expression mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and she can look out for things like textures she could be looking out for colors which she um, likes and so on and so forth and that's quite a nice little gentle exercise to do and it yields um, professional results and as i said you can then mix up the journaling aspect with that as well so it's got like a visualization of it yeah that sounds that sounds great thank you i've got a load of ideas already thanks <laughs> i was going to say one one last thing jackie i don't know if it would work when i was consistent about writing which was a while ago <laughs> i used to write like the day down but then at the end of the day i would write myself a short list i'd write my own to-do list for the next day and it would be like the most basic stuff in the world like pack lunch um make a smoothie go for a walk but it was really nice that if I set myself three tiny goals whether it was like I used to put like have breakfast get dressed yeah oh no honestly and then yeah. at the end of the day go back and the fact that I got to tick three things to say that I'd done yeah. three yeah. things really well that day and then yeah. once I got those three things nailed then it would be, I'm going to go for a walk. I'm going to do the washing up. And I kind of was able to build a routine around doing that. I've, I mean, it's fallen into the wayside for me at the minute, but it was something that when I wasn't feeling quite so good, um, was very helpful to me anyway. Excellent. That, that could, I mean, that's, I've, I've been trying to get her to start, um, at the moment she's in a university environment, but she's coming home for Christmas. And um, I've tried because I've read about it's good to get positive things under your belt as as and when you get up. So it's things like I've not said tidy your room. I've said uh, organize. Is it does it look organized? Uh, have it because, you know, there was the if you just get up and make your bed, you've had one success to start the day. Um, I, used to, I used to even put things like have a cup of tea because it meant I had to well, get out of bed to do it even yeah, down breakfast, like that. breakfast like you just said breakfast breakfast is another thing you know if you didn't shove food in front of her she'd quite happily just not eat um but there's a whole range of issues going on there but thank you very much that's really helpful so single words seven minutes to start with make sure she knows it's private space can use art um if we go walking pay attention to it and maybe note just three things scrapbooking with photography and then following up with writing something about the pictures and then at the end of the day, um, maybe making a plan for the next day and keeping stuff simple. So I've got lots to work with. I just thank you so much. I didn't expect to get quite so many things. So thank you. I'll add one more thing. Um, when, sorry, just one thing. Um, 
also if uh, you can make the buying a notebook or buying a pen or even giving her a notebook or giving her a pen make it a pleasurable experience because then again if you've got yourself a nice notebook to start off with then you're more likely to use it well that's that's excellent because I am thinking of um now that you've mentioned it I can make it part of the Christmas present I have actually got yeah. a pen that I had put aside and wasn't sure when the right moment would be but I guess Christmas would would be a good moment and I've got some uh Lurkton or however you pronounce it uh neon um notebook yeah. so thank you put that down Sorry, notebook pen um I, I, I was gonna suggest uh if, if you haven't already just uh, having fun with ink mm. shimmer yeah. inks and vivid colors and bright wacky things things that especially if she has a creative side just sort of you know drawing or writing with these things can just spark, you know, it it could just watching, be I guess. Squatting might do it. Squatting, it? yeah. Or just or just writing about the, the this golden shimmering ink and how it makes her feel and what it looks like. You know, nothing deep. Um I mean I, I do something I, I don't sort of journal at all, but I but I do like writing because I find it meditative just to take anything from 10 minutes out to all of a sudden 40 minutes has passed. Just playing around with different pens that are inked up and just describing what each one's like and how I like writing with them. And it's just that looking at the ink on the paper and the different texture and feel and stuff. It's, it is it is completely meditative because it's pushing everything else out of your mind. It's making you concentrate on the one thing which is basically what meditation is more of that. And uh, yeah, and also putting uh, her in the present, know. isn't it? Putting her in the present because if she's got to sit there and look uh, and think about what's right in front of her, she's present um yeah, without exactly. uh, and and even if she's thinking some uh negative things, she's still in the present thinking things through rather yeah. than yeah, thank looking you. Looking at this green ink and and whatever. Mm. Um Andrew, it's really interesting you you said about the photography. I mean, um Anyone who doesn't know, I'm a full-time photographer. I'm a press photographer. Um, and with my colleagues, we, we realized accidentally that we all do the same thing. And we ended up terming the sort of coining a phrase and calling it phototherapy. Because, you know, when, I mean, I've only done one war zone and some earthquake regions and stuff, but I've got colleagues who will dip in and out of war zones seven, eight times a year. And, takes it, it has a massive mental takes you know and, and it's very mentally traumatic obviously mm. uh, but just walking around exactly like you said Andrew kind of walking around in the park looking at textures and it, you know for a professional press photographer it seems a weird thing to do but when you do that again it's this meditative thing of just concentrating on something beautiful or textural or a color or whatever it might be and it's kind of becomes quite therapeutic in itself um so yeah good good suggestion Andrew I do the same with my photography I take a lot of my mental health out in my photography and it helps so much good and bad um what I'll do if it's okay I'll stop recording for now um and then we can continue chatting. There's no rush to stop. This just thought we could stop recording. Thanks again, Dolly. <laughs>